such a time as this and welcome back to for such a time as this the place the place where there is no such thing as a silent witness as we continue to look at what is going on in our country and our culture do you know the one person that's not being brought up on the pro justice pro social justice side you know the one person that's being left out of the equation the one person that's not being quoted Martin Luther King Jr. And there is a reason for that. We will take this time to uh, look at excerpts from what I consider the greatest modern day speech of all time. It is the I Have a Dream speech. Every time I go back to it, I get I get raptured up in it again because it is it is great. It is the greatest speech, the modern speech that I have ever seen. Quick word on Martin Luther King. I understand, and it's putting it kindly, that he had some theological challenges. Of course, he did. Think of Martin Luther King as a statesman. George Washington was a statesman. Thomas Jefferson was a, was a statesman, and I think God used them in the formation of this country. I think Jefferson even wrote his own Bible, taking out some parts that he did not like. Think of Martin Luther King as a statesman. I do believe if God could use Cyrus, if he could use Nebuchadnezzar at the time who was not a saved man, if he could use those guys for his purposes, he definitely can use. And I think he did use Martin Luther King for his purposes, which led to the civil rights and which led to the improving conditions of the African-American. It's going to be five clips that I am going to show and analyze and comment on the I Have a Dream speech. Here's the first one. As blacks at the time were fighting for civil rights, Martin Luther King Jr. had a warning to the African Americans who were struggling at that time. He had a warning. The warning was, as we struggle, don't you ever get bitter, which leads to hatred. Watch this. But that is something that I must say to my people who stand on the warm threshold which leads into the palace of justice in the process of gaining our rightful place. We must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. Let us not drink from the cup of bitterness and hatred. I wonder why they're not quoting that now or nowadays. Oh, I get it, because that's all that they're drinking from. Bitterness and hatred, they are going full-fledged. And when I say they, I am saying those who are, quote-unquote, marching for social justice. Bitterness and hatred, that's their calling card. Must not be guilty of giving in to wrongdoings. There's a reason why they don't quote MLK. There's a reason why. That's the first reason. He gets more in depth. Watch this. We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protests to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. The marvelous new militancy, which has engulfed the Negro community, must not lead us to a distrust of all white people. For many of our white brothers, as evidenced by their presence here today, have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny. There's a reason why, there is a reason why Martin Luther King Jr. is not welcomed in today's social justice. We must never, ever, ever allow ourselves, African Americans, to descend into violence. 
It's not what you hear today. We hear now that looting and violence is a form of reparation. Really? Really? There's a reason why this social justice movement, this critical race theory crowd, does not quote Martin Luther King Jr. Because he says, listen, when you buy into that, you must never, ever, 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 ever allow that type of thinking to lead you to a distrust of all white people. That is not the message. That is not the message. That is not the message of the crowd today. Nope, nope, nope. Not only, not only has it led to a distrust of all white people, critical race theory, social justice crowd, that crowd now says you are guilty simply because of the color of your skin and that all white people are racist. How is that not a distrust? If I'm going to label an entire group racist because of the color of their skin, see, there's a reason why they don't like MLK. They don't like him. They, 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 they don't like him. Didn't like him at the beginning. Don't like him now. He's not quoted. They don't use him because the most famous speech, in my opinion, the best speech, modern day speech, speech, I have a dream, rejects what what that crowd is about, rejects everything that that crowd stands for. And then the speech, the I have a dream speech, comes to the point of satisfied. Now, at the time, you had a lot of crowd, the, the, the crowd, uh, some in the, 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 the culture was telling Martin Luther King to pipe down, cool it, man. Uh, what do you want? When are you going to be satisfied? And notice what Martin Luther King Jr. does. He, he's going to explain exactly why he's not satisfied, and he is going to tell you specifics, not theoretical things up there in the cloud, specifics. And I got a list here. There, there's really only one that is still debatably going on today, and that's police brutality. Police brutality. Look back in the 60s, when Martin Luther King was talking about was dogs being sick on, sick on blacks, dogs biting and brutalize, brutalizing blacks, the hoses, the beatings. We don't see that today. When he says police brutality, that is what he means. Watch this. So, Martin Luther King, why aren't you satisfied? And Martin Luther King is able to give specifics. Watch. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We can never be satisfied. As long as our body is heavy with the fatigue of travel, cannot gain lodging in the motels of the highways and the hotels of the cities. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro's basic mobility is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one. We can never be satisfied as long as our children are stripped of their selfhood and robbed of their dignity by signs stating for whites only. We cannot be satisfied as long as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote and a Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote. No, no, we are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. All right. What you what you hear nowadays is when people ask about systemic racism, what he just laid out, Martin Luther King, was systemic racism, racism within the culture. Now, again, I talked about police brutality. Uh, we can debate about that, whether police brutality happens on a large scale, right? Um, that's one. But you look at it, systemic racism, yeah, it existed back in his day. He touched, touched about the hotels, hotels and motels. Blacks back then could not go into certain hotels and motels. It was all white people. 
you see that happening in, in all the movies. The Green Book, I believe, was, was a movie that talked specifically about that. That is systemic racism. You talk about housing. He says the mobility of African Americans is from a little ghetto to a bigger ghetto because blacks could not buy a house in certain neighborhoods simply because they were black. That is systemic racism. He talked about racist signs. African American children being stripped of their dignity because signs were saying whites only. I remember my father growing up in the 1940s in Mississippi. He told me his first mem some of his first memories was turning to his mother and saying, Mom, Mom, why can't I drink from that water fountain there? Why can I go to that bathroom there? 1940s Mississippi. That, ladies and gentlemen, systemic racism. Voting. Jim Crow laws. He couldn't vote. So when asked about systemic racism, Martin Luther King gave specifics. What are the specifics today? Police brutality. Black men being brutalized by police at an alarming rate. Oh, in 2019, unarmed black men, nine. Nine. And even that's debated. And look at how he ends uh, the argument. Look at how he ends it. Mm -hmm. But let justice roll down his waters, mm -hmm. and righteousness is a mighty stream. He quotes Amos 5, 24. Hmm. I wonder why that crowd does not quote or go to Martin Luther King. Maybe, just maybe, just maybe, maybe too much God. They are not, think about it, the, the social justice movement is not quoting the godfather of civil rights. Not doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is a movement mm -hmm. wholly different, mm -hmm. wholly different than the civil rights led by Martin Luther King. Totally different, totally different, which leads to one of the most famous quotes, the most famous quotes of I Have a Dream speech. And Martin Luther King Jr. tells you by which standard he wants his kids to be judged, not that they won't be judged, but by what standard are they to be judged. Here it is. A dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be, be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Judge not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Judge not by the color of their skin. They're to be judged. He's not saying they're not to be judged. But judge not by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. That is the exact opposite of what's going on today. That because of the color of your skin, you are not to be judged at all. Oppressors, oppressed. The oppressed class can do no wrong. Blacks can break a restraining order, show up at the place where the black man was accused of raping a woman months before, days before, breaks the restraining order, goes to that woman's house, fights with police, throws off the taser, gets up, goes around to his car with the police guns are drawn. The police are telling him, don't you dare get to that car. Don't you dare open up your car. He opens up the car after 
witnesses say telling them he has a knife. He opens up the car. The police shoots him. And now that man is held up as a hero. Was he judged by the color of his skin? Or was he judged by the content of his character and his actions at the given time? That is why they will not, they do not quote Martin Luther King Jr. anymore. Won't do it. The social justice movement of the day does not like MLK Jr., mm -hmm. does not like what? does not like what he stood for. Don't judge me. I, I, I pray that my kids are not judged by the color of their skin, content of their character. But nowadays, white people are guilty simply because of the color of their skin. They're racist. Doesn't matter what they did. It's all about what their grandfathers did. It's the system. They are being judged by the color of their skin. Martin Luther King says no. That, that wasn't his dream, was not his dream. And here's the last one. I'll simply end with him ending. I'll let him have the last word as he wraps up the historic speech. Notice who he thinks. Does he thank Karl Marx? Does he thank the politicians? Does he thank a president, a congressman? Senator, does he thank even the church? Does he, does he thank his wife? No, as he envisions the country as he would like it to be, he gives thanks. He gives thanks to the only one who can bring it about. I'll end with MLK Jr. finishing up his historic speech. Let freedom ring, and if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. And so let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring, and when this happens, freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at Such a time as this, 